Okay, we made it to section 6.2. Section 6.2 is all about solving trig equations. Before we can actually solve a trig equation, we have to know how to solve equations prior to that. We have to review for a minute how to solve a linear and quadratic equation. Because you, you know how to do algebra, you could do trigonometry. So if you look up here, I have four equations. First of all, what makes all four of these equations? That's right, the equal sign. What is always the directions with equations? What are we always asked to do? We're asked to solve. Well, what the heck does that word mean? When you say solve an equation, what does that mean to me? It means to isolate the variable. That's what the word solve means. Get the letter x by itself. And once you get the letter x by itself, you always have something it equals, which is a number. And that is your solution or answer. When we solve equations, we want our x on what side of the equation? That's right, we want it on the left, and we want our number on the right. Now, the first thing we need to refresh our memory is the difference between a linear equation and a quadratic. Out of these four equations, which ones are linear? Well, what is the definition of linear? Linear means the, the equation has a variable that has an exponent of 1. The highest degree of the equation is 1. So the first equation is linear because there's an x and that's the first power. What other equation is linear? Very good. Equation D. That's x to the first power. That's x to the first power. And that's important because if you have a linear equation, how many solutions should you get? That's right. You should only get one answer for x. So let's do examples A and D because they're linear. How do you solve a linear equation? Your job is to isolate x. If you need to draw a wall, draw a wall. The rule is, when you solve a linear equation, x is on the left, numbers are on the right. You move numbers by doing the opposite operation. So to get this x by itself, we're going to add, we have an add 1, we're going to move it by subtracting 1. Add 1 and subtract 1 make 0, they cancel out, that's why we're left with on the left side 2x. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Are you done solving? No. You still have to move the 2. The 2 is connected by multiplication, so that's why we do division. 2 divided by 2 is 1, but we don't need to write 1x because that's 1 times x, which is just x. On the left side, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, and we have our solution. Now, we know that's right because when we solve an equation, we're always taught we should check it, right? I'm going to do a mental check. I'm going to substitute in for my x, negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 equals negative 1. Yes, it checks. All right? So linear equations, there's only one full method to solve. Get x on the left, get the numbers on the right. By moving them by doing the opposite operation, you should get one solution. Let's go down to D. What makes this linear equation a little bit different is you have a set of parentheses. Now, we're supposed to do what's inside first, but can you physically add an x to a 3? No. So you've learned in math the distributive property. To get rid of that parentheses, we will multiply, distribute. So 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, the right side, there's nothing to do with, I bring it down. My job is to solve for x. Well, here's the wall. I got an x on the left and an x on the right. That's not going to fly. To solve an equation, you want your x's on the left. So to move an x over, you either do add or subtract. I'm going to make a big stink right now. When we're solving equations, you never move an x by division. You only move an x by adding or subtracting. So to move this 2x because it's positive, adding, we're going to do the opposite, subtract. What happens to 2x minus 2x? Well, it's the same thing as what happens to 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0, so 2x minus 2x is 0x, which means there are no x's, so we don't write that down. So the only thing on the left side is 6. On the right side, the x's cancel, and we're left with negative 1. So does this mean the answer for x is 6 and negative 1? No, it does not. 
You don't have an X anymore. This is like little Bo Peep who lost her sheep. You have lost your variable. And you should remember from Algebra 1 and college algebra, when you lose a variable when you're solving an equation, your answer, the statement you get, is either true or false. Which is this. This is a false statement. In our lifetime, 6 will never equal negative 1. So now here's the catch. What does it mean when you get a false statement? What is the answer? What is the solution? Well, there is no solution. There is no number for x you could put on the left and put on the right to make it balance. And the way we write no solution is the word no solution. Or you can use the mathematical symbol for no solution, which is 0 with a line through it. That is why that is never the number 0 in math. And that is why that is never the, the symbol for theta in math. That is the symbol for no solution, which means I solved an equation and I did not get an answer. All right. It would be great if every trig equation we deal with is going to be linear, but it's not because those are algebra 1 equations. So in algebra 2, the other famous equation you learned how to solve was quadratic. Now, what makes an equation quadratic? How can you look at it and tell me it's quadratic? Well, it depends on its exponent, its degree. Linear equations are degree 1. They have exponents of 1. Quadratic equations up here have exponents that are 2's. So there's the square that makes this a quadratic equation. There's the square that makes that a quadratic equation. Y'all with me? That's important. If that's degree 2, that means when you solve a quadratic, you don't get one solution, you get 2. Okay, keep that in mind when we do trig in a minute. All right, here's the problem with solving quadratics. Technically speaking, you learned four different ways to solve a quadratic in Algebra 2. Four. When I teach college algebra, I say out of those four ways, there's only three that are important. Okay? I'm going to give you in words, in case you forgot, the ways to solve a quadratic. And this is the order I go in. To solve a quadratic, the first way is to factor. The second method is square root. The third method is the formula. And the last method is called complete the square. Okay? You've learned, believe it or not, all four of these methods in Algebra 2 and in College Algebra. Now, out of these four, the formula and complete the square do the same job. So I refuse to do both. If they both do the same job, I'm not going to use both. And the complete the square, to me, is the harder method because it's a lot more steps. So I don't ever work that method. So you will not see me do complete the square with quadratics in my videos. When I solve a quadratic, I always go in this order. I say to myself, can I factor it? If it factors, I'll do that because that's quick and easy. If it doesn't factor, then I'll square root it. And if either one of these work, I'll resort to the formula. Now, here's the problem. You should have memorized in college algebra the setup for each one of those. Like, there are three steps on how to factor a quadratic. There are three steps on how to do the square root of a quadratic. And then, if you're going to use the formula, you had to memorize the formula. Okay, I'm not giving you the quadratic formula. I always told my students in college algebra, don't ever work with the quadratic formula unless that's your last option. And especially with trig, the quadratic formula is really yucky, messy. So let's not avoid, let's avoid that. So, to factor, who remembers the steps? Step one is to factor your equation has to be set equal to zero. All the terms have to be on the left side. Everybody's got to be on the same side to factor. Step two is that once you get it equal to zero, you factor it. And you have three big rules of factoring you learned in college algebra. GCF. Difference of perfect squares and trinomials. So GCF, third grade word, greatest common factor. What do the terms have in common? DPS, difference of perfect squares, which means difference that has a subtraction sign and everybody's a perfect square. Trinomial means three parts. Once you factor it, you should now have to solve two linear equations. So if you're going to Say to, my, say to me, all right, I have a quadratic equation. I'm committing to factoring. 
I have the equation equal to zero first. I decide which rule of factoring to do. When I factor, it gets rid of the x squared. Now I have two x's, so I set both equations equal to zero and solve. They become linear. If you don't want to do that method, then there's the square root method. But that's a totally different method. Totally three different steps. Step one on the square root is isolate the square. It's not set equal to zero. To do the square root method, you have to isolate the part that's squared, the term that's squared. Then you, step two, square root both sides. You square root the left side, you square root the right side. Keep balance. Step three is then to simplify your root. Okay? All right. If you're committing to the formula, then you need to know the formula. Um, the formula is, in song, x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if you're going to use the formula, you need how many numbers to substitute in? You need an a and a b and a c. You need three numbers to work the quadratic formula, and they come from the equation. I will tell you right now, in every example I work with you on the video, I will never use the quadratic formula. I try to pick nice quadratics that will either factor or square root to make life easier. All right, so we're reviewing how to do these methods before we go to trig. So I know this equation's quadratic. I know this equation's quadratic. All right, let me erase. And let's look at this one. If I have 3x squared minus 5 equals 22, I know it's quadratic, I know it should get two solutions. I want to solve it. Is it ready to factor? No, it's not set equal to 0. Is it ready to square root? No, because the square is not by itself. So now you've got to decide what you want to do. So let me write it down here. All right. You should have learned back in good old algebra 2. When you have a quadratic equation that has numbers and just a square, the quickest way is to do the square root method. Always. So if you just have all numbers and an x squared, the quickest way to solve this is by square rooting. So to square root, the first thing is isolate. Who owns this square? The x. It's got to be by itself. So I'm going to move the 5 by adding. I'm going to get 3x squared equals 27. I'm not isolated yet. The square belongs to the x. It doesn't belong to the 3. So I move the 3 by dividing. I get x squared equals 9. So step 1's done. I isolated the square. Step 2 is I square root both sides. Squares and square roots are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out. x equals. I'm not going to leave a square root of 9. What is the square root of 9? It's 3. But wait. A square means there's got to be two answers, so you should have learned when you square root, the answer is both positive and negative, and there are your two solutions. Now, if you didn't want to do it that method, that's fine. You could have done it by factoring. Let me show you by factoring. If you want to commit to factoring, then the equation's got to equal zero. So I'd have to move the 22 over by subtracting. I'd get 3x squared minus 27 equals 0, and I'd factor this. The first rule of factoring is always GCF. Pull out what the terms have in common. What can I divide 3x squared and 27 by? I can divide them by 3, so I pull out a 3, and that's going to leave me x squared minus 9. You all agree? But we're not done. Inside this parentheses is still a factoring rule. This is a difference subtraction. And these are perfect squares. So a difference of perfect squares factors into two parentheses. What multiplies the x squared? x and x. What multiplies the 9? Now remember, because the perfect square has got to be the same number. That's got to be 3 and 3. To multiply to a negative 9, one's positive, one's negative. Now you're not quadratic. You're just a good old x linear. You're a good old x linear. But you're two x's. So there's your two equations, x plus 3 equals 0 x minus 3 equals 0. We solve each linear. First solution is negative 3. Second solution is positive 3. Did we get the same two solutions by doing factoring as we did by square rooting? We did, but this was quicker. 
Now I know what somebody's going to ask me. So I say, but Ms. Black, what about this three you pulled out? Well, what about it? All you did was pull out this three to make what's inside the parentheses easier to factor. If you write equation, you write three equals zero. There's nothing to solve there. So guys, remember, when you're doing factoring, if you pull out a constant, it's useless now. You don't need it anymore. You're just pulling it out to make your job easier to factor. I don't care if you factor a square root, pick one and work it. In this equation, both ways work. The problem is both ways always don't always work. Let's go to our last quadratic. Okay, we have x squared minus 2x equals negative 1. So we see the square, we know it's quadratic, we know we're supposed to get two answers. We're either going to commit to factoring or square rooting. I do them in the order I see them. So I'm going to commit to factoring. Factoring means this equation's got to be equal to 0. So I'm going to add 1, add 1. I know I physically can't add a 1 to an x squared or 2x, so I write my quad this equation quadratic in descending order. Now I'm going to commit to which rule of factoring? Well, I look. Do I have a GCF, something in common? No. Is that difference of perfect squares? No. Even though there's a difference sign, you also have an addition sign. So this is not difference of perfect squares. This is one, two, three terms, a trinomial. So we do what we call backwards FOIL. We break it into two parentheses. FOIL, first, what multiplies to x squared? x times x. After the first, you go to the last. What multiplies to 1? 1 times 1. I want to take this 1 and 1 and I want to add it to make a negative 2. Well, that will work. 1 and 1 can add to negative 2 if they're both negative. When you factor a quadratic, it always makes two linear equations. You set each linear equation equal to 0, and you solve. Now, I, do I really need to solve both of these? No, because they're the same equation. So what happens here is we get two answers. They're just the same. So do we really got to write on paper x equals 1, x equals 1? No, the solution is 1. We did get two answers. They just happen to be the same. Now, my question to you is, could I solve this doing the square root method? Well, let's look. If we take x squared minus 2x equals negative 1, and we were going to do the square root method, step one is isolate the square. Well, here's the square, and it belongs to x. This piece has got to be by itself. Well, here's the wall. So I've got to move this negative 2x by adding it. So I get x squared equals I can't add a negative 1 to a 2x, so I write it in order, 2x minus 1. Now I'm supposed to square root it. Well, that's good. The left side works because squares and square roots cancel out and leave you x. But, sweethearts, can you square root 2x minus 1 and get a number? No. So that's an example of where the square root method does not work. Okay, so just remember with quadratics, this is the rule of thumb, and it's going to be the same rule with trig. The first thing we're going to try to do with quadratics is factor. Get everything to one side, set it equal to zero, see if we can break it down. If that doesn't work, we'll look at square rooting. And worst case scenario, we'll be happy using the formula. So now, I'm going to stop here, let you practice digest that, because when we come back in the next video, now we're going to do it with trick equations.